All right. Good morning, everybody. Happy, happy Friday. It's March 1st. Um, we're here at a new month. And this is also the month where Q1 is going to end. Um, obviously, a phenomenal, phenomenal quarter already so far. And uh, I want to talk about all the things that I believe are happening, have happened, will happen for the rest of the 2024 year. Because we have a long year ahead of us, right? Almost a good nine months ahead. But you don't want to start getting too excited now um, because the excitement of this move, uh, in my opinion, has already fully played itself out um, to the upside. And now I think we're going into a consolidation mode, maybe something that kind of looks like this chop, um, you know, sideways chop before we possibly head higher. And that could be a small little range of, you know, 10, 20%. Um, it could be something a little bit more, um, you know, sharp in terms of selling like that, or maybe excessive selling like that. But but this third scenario, I, I highly doubt is going to happen because this was like a 70% drop. Um, and so I think that's a little extreme. And of course, that was all related to COVID. It would take a pretty substantial event for BTC and crypto to drop, you know, 60 to 70%. I, I don't really see it. But, but I want to explain to you guys one thing about markets, okay, that that almost everybody is, um, you know, too sort of uh, euphoric to really realize and, and try to rationalize, which is that markets do not just go straight up like this. They will have big ebbs and flows and pullbacks and sell-offs and wipeouts um, to a large, large degree. Um, one of the ways that the market has been, you know, leading itself is obviously through BTC and the positivity that BTC is, you know, um, building through inflows that are coming in from um, institutions, right? You know, your BlackRock, Fidelities, um, ArcBees, Pretty much all these new ETFs that have been created, which are spot um, ETFs, um, have created a substantial amount of inflows. You can see a total amount of inflows thus far has been about uh, $7.4 billion. And of course, that's a lot, right? Uh, no one can necessarily say that this is a negative in any way. However, I want to posit to you guys this, which is that you still do have a net seller in the market, which is also GBTC, which is, you know, doing net selling of outflows, right? Um, and then you, of course, have, you know, your inflow takers, which are these guys right here. And that is continuously driving up the price, of course. Now, I believe we've reached somewhat of a, you know, uh, crescendo, pinnacle, whatever you want to call it in the market. Um, and this is kind of where, you know, price was previously capped. Um, back here in March 2021 and, of course, uh, September and October 2021 before we rolled over, right? So one can make the argument that even in this particular situation um, right now, I don't know about an exact price. Um, price could even do something like this or this and then pull back. But either way, um, you know, you should expect the sentiment being so high, the prices being so high, and, of course, the meme seasons, as they've been so extreme, to to bring about some sort of correction in the market, and so that correction in the market, I believe, is going to uh, first of all entail some BTC correction, of course, right? Uh, so I think BTC is going to get corrected. I, I really don't know how deep, to be completely honest. Um, I think it's entirely possible that BTC um, maybe sits in this sort of Let's do this actually. Um, if you do, where's my measurement tool? Uh, trying to find my measurement. There it is. Um, if we do some sort of correction, let's just say for the next few months, right? Let's just say a 30% correction. That puts us, um, that puts BTC from the local high that we had just, you know, a couple of days back um, to uh, where we, could correct to around 30%, which is around $44,000, right? Uh, and, and that could be, you know, maybe like typically in, in um, crypto bull markets, the corrections are going to be much, much shorter, probably like 30, 40 days tops, right? 
But we also have the halving coming up, which, you know, prior to the halving and then a little bit after the halving, which is around here, um, April 20th, I think, um, you will have, you know, somewhat of a choppy corrective mode before the market does sort of, you know, break itself out to much higher highs. So let's just say the market looks something like this, like this, you know, something like that in a rangy mode and then chops about and then does something like this by end of the year, right? I think that's entirely possible. Now, there are other aspects of the market that I want to talk about today, which are going to be sort of more important, in my opinion, to be paying attention to simply because they will yield you know, significant amounts of alpha going forward. One of the things that we've mentioned time and time again in my Discord, um, and again, I've had this Discord for, man, it's been like 2017, I think. 20, late 2017, early 2018 is when we created our own Discord. Prior to that, I used to just, you know, sort of lurk and post my thoughts anonymously. But since then, um, I decided to, you know, post my thoughts a little bit more officially, uh, you know, with, with my name behind it, with the official um, entity, uh, a legal entity behind it. So, you know, people realize like, hey, this is, this is a official, you know, crypto related business. Not that I'm giving you investment advice or anything, but at least you guys know that we just strictly focus on crypto, right? Um, I come from the tech and finance world, uh, like traditional finance. And, um, you know, the way I look at markets is probably a lot more different than most people in crypto do, which is total sort of, you know, sometimes in a very degen mode. Um, and, and while I can also subscribe to the degen mode of markets and crypto, I don't necessarily bank on that, right? I don't bank on all things being super degenerate. Um, in fact, I believe markets are um, more choppy, more rational many times um, and have, you know, the moments of correction where when people least expect it. And so I kind of, you know, instill that in my discord through just conversations that we have regarding markets of how I see, you know, whether funding is elevated, whether we cross specific SR levels, how to focus on level to level trading, whether you want to focus on altcoins, from altcoins to, um, you know, um, NFTs, like we discuss NFTs a lot. Like one of my big thesis is that if you go on my Twitter feed, I believe that um, NFTs this year, especially the PFP NFTs, right? Um, I think they're going to struggle a lot. Um, there's going to be, a, of course, a few collections, right? Like your Mad uh, Mad Lads, D Gods, Ovals of the world. I'm sure they're going to do well, but I think the money is actually going to rotate to you know projects like this, ultimate one of ones. Meaning, um, if you're familiar with Drip House, right? Drip House is sort of the platform where. Let me show y'all real quick. Um, Drip House is the platform where you can pretty much, you know, um, donate little thanks points, they call it, like each of these droplets. Each of these droplets is like literally less than the money, but it enters you into a raffle to win the ultimate, which is the one of one um, prize, right? The one of one piece of art. And so there's incredible amounts of art, which I've talked about before, Amet being one, one of my favorites, um, you know. These ultimates, I think, are going to be um, of significant value in the future. Okay. Now, again, not investment advice. I'm not telling you to go out and start splurging money to buy ultimate pieces of art because art is very subjective. I have no idea what one person sees as valuable or invaluable versus another just kind of walks away and says, well, this is, you know, not worth it, right? So to me, this is, um, in my opinion, going to be where the the NFT craze goes. Ultimate one of ones, and you need to focus on Drip House. You need to spend your time on Drip House and start recognizing, you know, why you want to spend more time here rather than collecting like random PFPs and you know monkey projects. Okay. So I'll say that, uh, and of course, you know, I've talked about many other pieces. You could see. Um, NFT volumes are significantly ticking up. Um, I've talked about other artists like Resin Progress, one of my favorite artists. This is one of the pieces that I own. Um, I think it's an invaluable piece to me. I think it's going to you know do really, really well into the future. 
I hope to take this to Sotheby's someday, but again, I could also be wrong, right? I could, it may not be worth anything to anyone, but it's worth a lot to me. So the point is drip house, ultimate one of ones, focus on that, okay? Now, a lot of this stuff, especially on drip house comes under the Solana ecosystem. And I've spoken about Solana many times. I was one of the very few people who, um, bought Solana, I think $8 is where, um, let me see if I posted something about that $8 soul, something like that. I hope you can find it because I definitely posted about it. Um, oh, there it is. Yeah. So, um, you know, you, you'll find a screenshot somewhere in, uh, my Twitter feed or my discord of buying Solana pretty much, you know, December, January of last year, um, in 2023. And that's when Sol was trading at $8. And I've been a huge fan of Solana, even in the previous bull market in 2020 and 2021. Um, if you've been, once again, part of our NFT, or part, sorry, part of our Discord community, you'll know that, you know, we've been huge fans of Solana for the longest time. Um, we didn't just stumble upon it this year just because of the prices are up. I used it tremendously back in 2020, 2021, 2022. Um, and I believe I'm going to use it tremendously going forward because it's just March of this year. I think there's going to be a lot more activity, a lot more use cases for Solana going forward, um, especially, especially in, you know, the meme coin space, right? I talked about Draco, which is one of my um, meme coin projects that I'm focusing on. I talked about Draco when it was trading at like 900K. Now it's almost double the price. Um, the thing about meme coins is that they're very hit or miss. So I could be totally wrong. You know, I get that. But I think um, Draco is one of those uh, projects where the, the community, if you go to their Discord and stuff, they're continuously active, posting, building, you know, creating partnerships, all kinds of, you know, stuff that they need to do to be successful. Okay. So I respect that. And I think, you know, Draco is a project that you want to be focusing on um, quite heavily, in my opinion. And again, it's up to you if you want to buy it or not. I don't really care. I already have a position in it, but I think it's going to do tremendously well. Like people are asking me that, you know, how do you compare meme coins or what is like the upside to them? Well, the upside is really just attention and memetics, right? Like if the meme can catch up on its own and the meme of, the Draco project is really just, you know, um, the year of the dragon building the meme itself. Um, I don't know, maybe some, some partnerships or play to earn games, something, whatever they want to build. If that is going to succeed, um, by the end of this year, again, it's March, 2024, December, um, you know, my goal is to see this thing appreciate to the tune of, you know, 50 to $100 million, right? That's like 25x to 50x. Now, again, that's my goal, my intention, not telling you that should be your intention. Um, and I don't even know what's, if it's possible, but that's my goal, right? So meme coins is definitely a thing. Now you've seen kind of the success of meme coins, especially via, you know, things like um, USDC, the upside down cat. Of course, of course, the big dog, um, you know, with, which is, uh, where is it? Where is um, with here? With, um, which hit a dollar, a billion dollar project that literally started almost at, you know, less than a million dollars, right? That's a thousand X, you know, bang. That's huge. That is incredibly, incredibly huge for um, something like WIF to be trading at some insane levels, like a billion dollar project. <laughs> now, again, I, I wanna show you guys like in our discord, we, we are pretty damn good at finding the early metas and stuff like this. Um, I was just kind of too dumb. I had purchased WIF um, much, much earlier, uh, not even at 41 cents. I think it was much, much earlier. Let me see. Um, where, where was the first time I found whiff? Um, let's see here. Uh, oh yeah, I think it was, yeah, see, you could see I found whiff at five cents. Actually, no, I had found it at three to three to four cents. Um, 
Now, this is this is the thing about memes, right? Like no one really, really knows how high these things can go. But also, whiff is just one example of a million, um, meaning like the other nine hundred and ninety nine thousand um, and you know more than that have actually gone to pretty much zero, right? But whiff, bonk, some of these other ones have gone to multi millions and sometimes a billion dollars. So the point is like, you know, you have to be pretty good at recognizing where the meme is catching up and find it relatively early, which I did, you know, around four to five cents. And unfortunately, I was just too dumb to hang on to it. Um, and I also had a pretty large position in WIF, you know, surprisingly enough, multiple times. And as you can see, now it's up, you know, almost 25x from my initial entry, right? So it's things like that that make you think, well, where is the crypto space going? Where is the attention going to be drawn? And one of my sort of convictions is that, well, I think the attention is going to Solana. I think memes are definitely going to be a thing. I don't know about WIF anymore because it's already a billion dollars. Um, I'm not quite sure like things are much sustainable above a billion. Um, but but again, I, I don't know, right? But projects like Draco, um, when they're sitting at 2 million, now you got to ask yourself like, oh, well, am I going to make that same kind of mistake again where you lose out on another whiff, right? I don't know if there's going to be another whiff. Uh, it could just be the thousand other altcoins that just go to zero, you know? But I pay attention to the community. I sit on their Discord. I watch their, you know, automatic burns of their tokens. Yeah, you know, I think I'll hang on to it for a little while. All the tokenomics and everything is here. The um, token address is here. So please do your own research, not investment advice. Okay. I don't really care if you buy or sell. Okay. So Solana is going to be the next big, you know, meta for the rest of 2024. That I'm fairly confident with. Um, memes, of course, are going to be a big thing. Draco might be a part of the, you know, uh, next cycle of memes ripping up. Now, the other thing is, uh, you know, stuff like Crown, right? Th these are game five gambling tokens, which I think are going to do really well too. Crown is one of those tokens, um, which is kind of like, you know, you get to basically bet on horse racing or there's bet decks, which doesn't have a token yet. Um, let me see. Bet decks, this thing right here on Solana, right? This could also be a really big thing, you know, uh, on Solana in the future where you're just kind of basically, you know, doing a form of like betting, sports betting, gambling, et cetera. And then, of course, you know, you have non-Solana products, too, um, just to go off a little bit tangent, um, RLB, right? RLB is also um, one of those positions that I've held since last summer. Um, so July, June, July 2023, I bought it at 0.7. I'm still up 100%, but personally, you know, I'm banking on Rollbit to be doing much, much bigger numbers, much higher. So these are kind of like the trends that I'm kind of paying attention to, you know, in, in the market. Um, I don't know where the money um, is going to sort of travel to in the next few months. The, the entire narratives and metas could change. But I think for now, these seem relatively safe, right? Memes are always going to grab attention. Gaming, gambling, GameFi, that kind of stuff will also grab attention and money. Um, and then... More importantly, what I spoke about at the beginning of this video, which is you know things like AI products, right? AI products. I spoke about Ajax and GRT, Ocean, Orai, PHP, all this stuff we spoke about literally like last year, beginning of last year, middle of last year. And these tokens, you know, are up almost 10, 20, 30x in some cases, right? Now again you know, anyone could say, oh, well, I saw the AI boom happening and what did you do about it? Well, I traded it a lot since last year. Question is, did you? I traded it, I bought it, I sold it, I took profit, but I will say I was not smart enough to hang on to my high conviction projects for a long period of time, which, you know, I think a lot of us struggle with in crypto is, you know, how long do you hang on to a project for, you know, how many multiple X's? Um, I, that's kind of where, you know, I struggle, um, where I realize that um, I am still sort of the old guard mindset of, you know, realize your profit, take the money, and then use it in your real life. And that's when it's really real, 
rather than hoping for, you know, your five X, 10 X's of the world, I'm happy with like a two or three X and that's meaningful amount of money for someone like me, you know? So, um, AI projects, we've spoken about a lot in, in our discord, you know, time and time again, I mentioned fetch and Ajax and RI. Now I'll give you another, another little piece of alpha. I believe that Solana is going to be the chain where AI also succeeds. I think Solana is going to be the chain where majority of these kinds of narratives really, really play out. Whether it's this AI narrative that I spoke about or DPIN, which is decentralized physical infrastructure networks, right? Um, there's a lot of these coins, which you guys should look into, you know, render, um, uh, shadow, um, coin, uh, uh, HNT, which is uh, helium, hive mapper, um, which is honey. Right? I, I think a lot of these are going to be really successful, you know, maybe in the rest of 2024. But AI is definitely going to be successful because it's the top of mind and discussion for every person. Every person that you know is talking about AI in some way or another. So I think AI is definitely going to be the project that you want to, uh, the, the segment that you want to be watching, especially on Solana. Now on Solana, there's a few projects that I generally watch. Um, SNS is one of my favorites. I had a position in SNX, uh, SNS around 04, um, sold it close to like, you know, pretty much 10 cents. So about 100, 115% gain. And now I'm kind of just waiting for it to pull back, show me more strength, um, you know, more build out of their product. And then I'll buy some more. SNS is one, Wales is another non- um, AI product, but still nonetheless, a very successful project at that. Basically your OTC style trading of points, um, you know, pre-sale tokens. Um, they're also going to have a NFT area where you can buy NFTs, I think, you know, prior to mint. So all kinds of cool stuff happening on the whales market. And again, you can go to their website, you know, you can look up all the features and roadmaps and all the stuff that they're, you know, doing, right? So um, I think that these projects, these metas, narratives that I just spoke about are the things that you want to be focusing on specifically in Solana. Now I'll give you one last piece of alpha, which um, I believe that many people are not looking, and that is base chain. I think base chain is the place where um, the big, big money is going to go into, especially from Ethereum. Because you guys know very well, like ETH ecosystem is significantly larger than than um, Solana, right? Um, they have all these L2s like Scale and Arbitrum and uh, Optimism and, um, you know, things like AVAX, uh, Matic. And now they have Base. Base is the chain that is built by Coinbase as an L2 on Ethereum. So it's actually very easy to bridge from Ethereum into base. I just did it the other day and I'm following, you know, newer projects on base uh, like this one right here, B Core, right? Blue Core, which um, you can join their Discord right here and you can kind of see, you know, all the stuff that's they're building, they're talking about that they, you know, want to, um, you know, envision for their project going forward. So this is their Discord and you can find their link on their website, okay? So B Core, um, I picked up a, a small position in. Now again, not investment advice. Make sure you guys do your research. Don't just blindly buy stuff that other people are talking about. But I bought it because base chain, number one, it's on base. Number two, there's going to be very, very few projects on base right now that are really, really building and executing you know, high levels of transaction via DEXs, swaps, lending, bridging, borrowing, you know, that's, you know, that kind of um, DeFi activity. And so that tells me that B Corp is building those products and they're really, really early. Um, sometimes being early could be good. Sometimes being early could be bad. It's all about your marketing, the kind of traction that you get for your product. I hope and I foresee um, that Blue Core is going to do really, really well going forward. And sitting at 635K mar uh, market cap, to me is a much better, let's just say, calculated risk than something if I bought at 600 million or 60 million, right? So that's why I feel a little bit comfortable, you know, buying to stuff like this early. Um, and again, you know, please do your own research. I'm not going to tell you to buy or sell, but I already own a position in it. 
this is the kind of stuff that I talk about in our Discord um, time and time again. I also have this little channel where I talk about my position updates, things that I've taken profit in, things that I've I mean, held on to for, for a long period of time. Like Send is another project that's on base um, that I believe is going to do really, really, really well. Um, and it already has, like we talked about Send again last year, right? So we were pretty early to Send and I get that. Um, you know, people like to kind of shit on the fact that things are not moving for weeks and months, and then they finally get a nice 100% candle, right? And then I try to tell people, well, this is kind of, you know, the original vision of the project, which was hanging on long enough, trusting the team to do their thing and deliver, and let's see where it goes, right? So send I've had since, you know, 08. Now it's trading at um, 02 which is uh, actually pretty much a three X for me. Um, same thing with, you know, things like RLB, Cheetah Fun Games. I mean, you know, that project, I don't really know what's going on. Uh, I just have too many other things to pay attention to. But Draco, again, gave people the uh, entry and insight around um, uh, Draco at $1 million market cap. And by the way, the capital sizes have changed because I continuously like add a different, you know, different levels. Um, so point is that, you know, some of these, uh, sizes are much larger now. Um, some of them, you know, I trim, uh, based on, you know, profit taking, right. Some of them, um, I exited already. So this is the kind of information that I provide to my members in, in, uh, discord. Okay. Um, so yeah, I really think that base is going to be the place that you want to be paying attention to. Um, make sure you create your watch list of projects you're watching, things that you're buying, things that you know you want to buy. Create your um, shopping list because, as I said before, once and if the market does give you a pullback, it happens rapidly fast when it comes to bull markets, right? If you believe this is you know pretty much the beginning of a bull market, you're going to get some really really rapid flash downs and pullbacks that you're not going to you know instantly know exactly what to buy at what level. That's so why you need to just write that stuff down and just know that this is what I need to be focusing on, you know, here's the AI projects that you know um I spoke about or and some other person that you, you know, follow spoke about and then just do research in them and then start mapping out levels. Um if you don't know how to map out levels um you know, there's a Udemy course that I had released a while back. It's like very basic technicals of, you know, let me see if I can find it. Udemy Alpha Trades course. Let's see if it's there somewhere. Um, yeah, I think it's probably this one. Yeah. So we have we have a small little course. Um it's it's a relatively like you know cheap um course that you could buy. Um both of these. Uh, you can buy and look into. And, you know, if you're interested, check it out, see what it teaches you about markets and how to map out technical levels and how to wait for pullbacks and how to read sentiment and, you know, how to put on different indicators to see when exhaustion has come about to the upside or downside. And then you could decide if you want to pull the trigger on certain things, you know? So I've given you the rundown of markets in general. I've given you the idea of where I believe markets are going, which, you know, base chain, which is Ethereum, you know, related and on base chain specific products. Um, AI as a large sector in and of itself, uh, Deepin as a sector, you know, a couple of coins within Deepin. Um, you know, Solana, of course, I legitimately believe Solana is going to be, you know, the, the most massive, massive sort of uh, traded asset in all of 2024. Um, and then within Solana, I told you all, you know, about Whale's Market, of course, Draco as a meme coin. Again, you know, please do your research in meme coins because they're extremely risky. Um, and then, of course, things related to art and NFTs, um, why I believe Drip House is going to be really successful and why you want to focus your time on Drip House because the art that you collect could not only be satisfying for you, the collector, the creator, the artist, um, but it could also just maybe, maybe in the future pay off really well. Okay. So that's pretty much it. Um, that's my update on markets, my thoughts on everything that um, is related to markets, what I'm you know, looking at uh, for the foreseeable future. 
Um, if y'all have any questions, you know, shoot me a ping on my Twitter. Um, I'm pretty active on Twitter. You could shoot me a message if you'd like, or join us in the Discord. The link is below. Um, come hang out with us. We talk a lot about markets, altcoins, meme coins, NFTs, AI projects, you know, gaming, gamble file, all kinds of fun stuff. All right. Take care. Good luck. And um, we will chat real soon. Cheers, guys.